Bless you, you may be seated. We can realize that uh, any time that there's something very special and very expensive that somebody's going to counterfeit it. When we lived in the Orient, we, we could have bought the entire British Encyclopedia for about 50 cents uh, a book. You know, there are about 20 of them. And uh, it said British Encyclopedia on the outside, and uh, it was the total encyclopedia inside. But if you looked in small print, it was printed in Taipei. And, and so they bypassed all the profit that the Americans were going to make with this encyclopedia. Uh, and, uh, but it wasn't the real thing. It, it was somebody's imitation of the real thing. And in Hong Kong, you can buy a Rolex watch for $50. They, they don't spell the word Rolex correctly. And, and they, they say it was made in Twix, uh, T-W-I-X-T, Twixt. And, and so uh, if you want a counterfeit, you can always find one. Uh, but if you want the real thing, then you have to look for the real thing. Can you say amen? On page 83 of your teaching syllabus, we are dealing for the first time, uh, after dealing with the total gifts of the Holy Spirit, their functions and operations and so forth, <coughs> we're dealing with the devil's counterfeit. Now, this is necessary for the reason that some of us that haven't had great training uh, in this uh, might, might be deceived uh, because uh, these counterfeits can come very strong at times, and so we must understand that. And anything with such inestimable value to the church as the uh, gifts of the Spirit, you can see why the devil would want to counterfeit them immediately. And uh, they want, they're not just counterfeited today, they have been counterfeited uh, from the beginning because it's in the Bible, you know. It was in Paul's day, the counterfeit was already working. And, and so uh, we, we come to know that there's a real and an unreal. And that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't hurt people. You know, that, that shouldn't say, oh, well, what am I going to do between the real and unreal? Well, I have enough sense to know which is which. Uh, a few of my friends bought those $50 watches in, 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 in California. I mean, in, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, but uh, but uh, they knew when they bought them that you don't buy a Rolex for $50, you know. But they had a lot of fun with it. It looked precisely like one, but it didn't act like one. <laughs> is, was the problem of it. And, and, and so uh, we must understand that there's an imitator called the devil, and he wants to imitate what God is doing, but he is a deceiver. And you cannot get the fruit of the Spirit out of a thing that belongs to the devil. And if we understand that, then we know how to resist the devil and resist his lies. And all the people said, in the book of the Revelation, in chapter 13, in verse 14, it says, and there's one, he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of his miracles. Now, we, we, we're coming very close to the time of the great tribulation. And there's going to be more deceptions than ever before. There are more right now than has ever, ever been in the history of mankind. And, and in the great tribulation, this, this demonized person that's the Antichrist, that, that he, he will produce seemingly miracles. Now, this has already been done, and even in the last few years, some have been deceived by, by someone saying they had something from heaven or they had blood coming out of them or something or another. And, and, and so it, it's, it's, it's not a completely rare thing. The only thing about it is that some very good people were deceived by it. And they didn't do what the Bible says, test the spirits. When you test the spirit, you know, you, 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 I am such a rational person that if you showed me blood coming out of your hands, the first thing I'd do is take some of it, put it on a piece of glass, take it to the laboratory and say, tell me what this is. Is this a chemical or is it chicken blood or what? Just tell me what this is. And so I would know real soon whether it was your human blood or not, but others will just raise their hands and say, hey, boy, look at there, that's a miracle. Woo! I don't woo for anybody. I, I, just, I just refuse to. I want solid truth, truth that will stand up anywhere in the world, a truth that is so pure and holy that you can shout over it until the end of your life. 
And, and, and so in doing that, then you do what the Bible calls test the spirits uh, to see whether they be of God or not. The Antichrist, it says here, will deceive many people. Uh, isn't that amazing? And that's the Revelation 13, 14, if you missed it. By the miracles uh, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Uh, so he was able uh, to, to, to produce these things in the sight of the one he was collaborating with. The beast is the person that stands up as the political head in the end time. The false prophet is one who is the religious head. And then there's Satan. There are three of them together. And he is a moral deceiver. And he seems to be doing an awfully big job on the face of this earth at the present time, saying that you could commit any kind of moral uh, wrong and it, it'll be all right. Uh, sin is never all right. And it always produces its briars and always produces its thorns and always produces its death. The wages of sin is death. Can you say amen? And he was saying to them that dwell on the face of the earth that they should make an image to the beast which, which had the wound by a sword and he did live. Uh, someone will seek to assassinate him and they possibly have the television cameras right there and they'll be sure that he should be killed and when he says, I'm all right, they're going to say, well, who is like this person? This person is the person we've been, you see, Mussolini used to, make statements like that. He had says, there's not a bullet ever been made that can ever penetrate my body. And all oh, the people went crazy down there, singing and clapping and stomping their feet. That here was a man that even a bullet couldn't stop. But he got stopped, you know, just, just, uh, just a few months, just a few months after he, uh, uh, after he was assassinated, uh, I was at the very filling station where they hung him up in Northern Italy. And they gave me a picture, and I, I went and, uh, and, and tore it up. I couldn't stand it. They kicked his head until there was nothing but a knob sticking out about this big out of, out of his back. There was, nothing, there was nothing left up here. The, the people of the town would come by while he was hanging there and kick his head until there was nothing there, there, was nothing there as big as my fist. And, and, and I just didn't want to carry anything like that around with me, so I... I just tore the thing all to pieces so nobody else could get it. But he was the one that said that, you know, you couldn't kill him, that, that, that he was the man of destiny for this, for this world. And he deceived many, you know, until they discovered that he was a phony. And, and so in the gifts of the Spirit, we've got to know that these things do exist. And then we've got to choose what is right and what is from heaven. And all the people said... Now, the word of wisdom is the greatest of the nine gifts. It is like... The, the ministry in the Old Testament of the prophet that tells the future. It's God making you wise as to what he is going to do. And so at 1 Corinthians 12 and 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, then the word of knowledge by the same Spirit to another faith, to another working of miracles and so forth, to another diverse kinds of tongues. Now, who is it that tries to imitate this first one, this word of wisdom? All witches claim that they can reveal some parts of the future. And so when you move toward witchcraft, you move toward a deception against the, the greatest of all uh, spiritual gifts to, to, uh, to the church. All soothsayers seek to tell you the future. If you just come to them and to the, let them look in the palm of your hand or let them look into a crystal ball, uh, they, they will tell you something about your future, about tomorrow. So they are imitating uh, the, the word of wisdom which is the number one gift of the nine gifts of the Spirit, uh, they, are the they, are, they are the imitators of it. Now, uh, God spoke through the Apostle Paul in, in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, 13, and he said, for such are false apostles. Now, can you imagine them having them back, back 2,000 years ago? You can expect them today, you know, if you had them then. He says, they are false apostles. Men who go around and say, I'm an apostle, and they're not, they're not, they don't bear the fruit of an apostle. And he says, they are deceitful workers. Now, now, if, if they had those things 2,000 years ago, you and I shouldn't be dummies. And, 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 and we shouldn't be worried about it either. I am not worried about a person coming in our community or in our services and deceiving me. Uh, my, my spirit awakens to it. I can 
sometimes pick them out in the, in, in, in the congregation before they say anything. And if they do say something, I said, would you kindly sit down, please? And I have done that in this building here. Would you please sit down? Uh, because something inside of us says this is not from above. Uh, this is a deceiving thing that would deceive and further deceive and further deceive and further deceive. A deception will never quit when it, once it gets its clutches into you. Nobody ever goes wrong just once, you know. Once you start going wrong, the devil, if you go into a false doctrine, you'll have another false doctrine coming up pretty quick. And then you'll have another false doctrine coming up after that because the deceiver is never finished. He will deceive until he puts you into the wrong place for eternity. They are deceitful workers. They are transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Isn't that a nice way to say that? That they transform themselves. Um, I don't care for titles of any kind. I teach my people here to call me Brother Summerall. I'm sure I'm a brother. I, don't, I do not teach them to call me Pastor Summerall. I'm not sure I'm one. I'm working on it. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to be called an apostle. Uh, because someone will get the wrong idea that I might be better than they are or something or another. So if they call me brother, I'm sure I'm a brother. And, and I, I, can, I can keep it that way. If you're not careful, you'll want to tag because of pride. Yeah. Now, now, now we, we got people in our country here that call themselves bishops, and, and a couple of them have gotten up a little higher into an archbishop. And, and I said, now just let me find out where this came from. And I found out a little man named Duplessis, David Duplessis, that I'd known for 30 years, come up out of South Africa. And, and, and he made a friend of mine, Mears, uh, he, he says, I'm going I'm, I'm to um, make you over in, in, into something else, you know. So he laid hands on him and said, now, now, now from this moment, you're a bishop. Well, in the New Testament, a bishop is something very close, very close to being an, an elder. And a bishop is not one of the five ministers that God puts in the church. It's one that man puts into the church. And, and, and so just because the Roman Catholics got it wrong, these Pentecostals think they got to get it wrong. They got to get it wrong too. And then they gave it to Bob McAllister down, down in Rio de Janeiro, a kid that I raised myself in the Philippines and here in, in, in this country. And, and then, and then they, the guy down in, in Atlanta, uh, Paul, they put him in, made, made, made him a bishop, and, and, and it all came from zero. It didn't come from a man that had the ability or the ministry to, to, to say, I, I'd like to lay hands upon you for this. And if, and if it was to come from, from someone, it ought to come from the church. You know, these people I'm talking about didn't, uh, didn't have a church. Uh, Duplessy never did pastor a church. Uh, he, he was kind of a political man in South Africa, worked in the organization. He came to this country. He was kind of a teacher that went around to different places. But he had no, no, no church uh, that, he was, that, that he was part of. Now, if you go back and study these things, like I've been teaching you for five minutes here, what's the source of it? Where did, who started it? You get to understand things real quick then. Why did he have the ability to, to say, I'm, I make you this or that. Who was he to make you something? If a man came up to me and says, I'm going to make you an apostle, I'd either spank one side or the other side of him, whichever side I could get to first, uh, and, and, and say, how stupid you are. You can't make me anything. God has made me all that I am. God will make me all that I will be in the future, and I don't need your help, you see. And, and so uh, if we will be wise enough we don't need to be deceived. But there are deceivers in this world right now who would like to cause some little kid that's not much more than a, an exhorter. An exhorter is an exhauster. And so just tell him that now I'll make you a bishop. Well, uh, if you didn't put so much prominence to it, that would be all right. It's like setting your side as an elder. But the word elder means that you're not a kid. Are you here? It means you're a person of experience. So you start calling a 20-year-old kid an elder, uh, you, you ought to go down and talk to the police departments, ask them if, they, if that's what they'd do. Uh, they'd say, oh no, an elder's a person's had experience. 
ask a carpenter, and he'd say, what, what is a senior carpenter? Person that has experience. So you've got to, to think straight about it. And the Bible is straight on it if you follow the Word of God. And the warnings are there that they make themselves to be apostles of Christ. And don't marvel, don't marvel, this is verse 14, Satan himself uh, transformed into an angel of light. And so even Satan has a deception there of some people seeing this or seeing that and seeing the other, and all they saw was a devil and didn't know it. Now, that's the Bible. That's not any, any denomination or any person. And it only means this. Walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, and you won't be caught up by the devil's tricks. Can you say amen? amen. He says in verse 15, uh, Therefore, it is no great thing of his ministers, that's the devil's ministers, be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, th this is how strong I am in this. If a man comes to town, he began to make uh, short legs longer and short arms longer and, and, uh, and look like some miracles are taking place, I, I wouldn't be too interested in what was there. I'd say, where's his wife? You know? How many women is he living with, you know? Then I said, where was he last time? Let me check and see if he paid his bills before we left town. These fellows don't pay their bills before they leave town or any other time, you see. So I would immediately see what type of person he is if he's a good person. If you're in Jesus Christ, you're a good person. You treat people right. You do what is right. You, you, you pay your bills. You don't go around telling lies. And so if we are what God wants us to be, then we're like him. And all the people said. Amen. Now that's functioning in the, in the first gift of the nine gifts of the Spirit. And then in, in, in the word of knowledge. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12 and 8, it says, there is given to another the word of knowledge by the, by, by the same Spirit. Now the word of knowledge is when God makes you to know something supernaturally that exists. Knowledge is a fact. Knowledge is a truth. Knowledge is self-existent. It's already there. It doesn't have to be created. The word of wisdom, uh, at the time it's spoken, does not exist. It has to be spoken into existence by the Spirit of God. So it's not what is, it's what's going to be. It's a prophetic ministry. Uh, but in the, in the word of knowledge, it does exist. God gives you information about something you can't see it nor hear it, but he tells you that it's there. All right? In palm reading, we have people who try to tell you supernaturally about your life, what's going on, who's working with you or against you. Uh, and, and gold finding, it is, it is trying to know where, the, where to look for treasure. Uh, there, there are lots of people that will tell you, if you go here, you'll find treasure. If you go there, if you find treasure. And I always say, yeah, if there's some treasure there, you'd beat me to it. Because they're not good people. And if there was treasure there, you wouldn't get a chance. Uh, they, 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 they'd be there before you got there. And so fortune telling is, is the devil's counterfeit. And if you're going to engage in that and say, oh, it's, it's all right to tell a fortune. It is not all right you know, to, to, to tell people's fortune, this means that and that means this, and as if you're doing it supernaturally. My mother tells me that she was walking uh, down the street uh, with, a, with a, another lady, and they were both full gospel people. And, and there was a sign up there, fortune telling, 50 cents. It's gone up since then. And, and so the other lady says, you know, I'd like to have my fortune told. My mother said, oh, no, I couldn't do that. I, 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 I don't think that woman's right in there. Oh, she says, I'm going to try. So uh, the, the lady went in to get her fortune told, and, and uh, my mother just had to wait for her, so she sat by the door. And they went behind a curtain, bum, 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 woo, 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 back of the curtain there. And finally, the old witch came running out, screaming. He says, you get out of this, this room. My mother said, I didn't say anything. He says, I can't tell this woman anything till you get out. He says, you're in here doing something. You're hexing me. <laughs> and my mother had to go stand down the street on the sidewalk before the, <laughs> before the woman could try to tell the story of this other woman, uh, to, her, her, to tell her information about herself and so forth. We don't have to go to the world nor the devil to find out the future. You see why? God makes you walk by faith. He knows the future. But if you knew it, you wouldn't have to walk by faith. 
I don't know tomorrow, but I know I can hold the hand of him that does hold tomorrow. And I don't have to have anybody saying, let me tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't need to tell me what's going to happen tomorrow because I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I already know it. All I have to do is hold on to his hand and he'll take me through tomorrow. But you have to live by faith for tomorrow. And God wants us to live that way. Then we have the discerning of spirits. We have people in mind reading, ESP, the gurus, Ouija boards. We have all kinds of manipulations. And, and they are evil. They are not spiritual. They don't belong to the Bible. They don't belong to God's people. All the information that you and I need, we get it in prayer and the reading of the Word of God. And there are so many people deceived. So many people deceived. A young lady from our church here went down to Springfield, Missouri to the Bible College. And uh, one night she called her mother and said, Mother, come get me quick. I'm, I'm being killed. And, and uh, my uh, mother drove from here to Springfield, Missouri to pick up her daughter and says, well, honey, tell me what happened. She said, three or four of us girls had a Ouija board. And at night, before we'd go to bed, we'd take the Ouija board and we'd talk to it. Who's going to be my boyfriend? What color is his hair going to be? How tall is he going to be? How much money is he going to make? And, and we were talking to the Ouija board all the time. And he says one night, we said, who's talking to us? And the voice came back, Satan. And says that room was so full of darkness, so full of evil, so full of the devil, we all began to tremble and to shake and to scream. And I grabbed the telephone and said, come get me. You can, in a Bible school, you know, play with the devil if you want to. When you're supposed to be studying the Bible, you can be playing with the devil there. And here were these girls from different states down there uh, go, go, going to school, playing the Ouija board at night, you see, without anybody knowing it. And finally... Yeah, the Ouija board is talking back to them. But finally, when they said, well, who are you? He says, I'm Satan. And, and, and that was her last day in school. She, she came home and, and, and she stayed home under the care of her mother. who was a very spiritual, a very spiritual woman. Then you have the gift of faith. And there, there, there are people that can be very deceiving in that. You can have the working of miracles. You could go into a thing like that for a long time. Uh, and, and, and show how people make like they have faith, but they don't have it. The working of miracles, I read to you from the book of the Revelation. The gifts of healing, uh, they, they're witches. They think they can give you potions and fetishes and, and all kinds of curses and, and different things. And they're cults who say they can heal, and it's all a lie. They can cause your body to tingle a little in your body to say, well, yeah, right at this moment I don't feel anything, but you're not healed you'll find out that you're not healed. I've lived in heathen countries and they got a big job to do. They hadn't healed anybody over there yet. And, and so you got the gifts of healing, you got the gift of prophecy, and you can read it all, all down through, the, uh, through there. And, and Revelation 16, 13, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, which is the devil, out of the mouth of the beast, which is the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And so uh, those are the three great deceivers of the time of the, uh, of the, time of the great tribulation upon this earth. And we have to... Watch them, we won't see them in their strength because we will be raptured. But until then, we must watch and see that we are not deceived. Then you have the gift of speaking in tongues. The devil can speak in tongues. And a lot of people that are backslidden can still mimic what they used to say. But it doesn't have that keen edge of the Holy Spirit upon it. They're mimicking what they used to do. And it's not real and it's not true. And if you're in the Spirit, you can feel that. You can say, hey, that's not coming out of the Spirit. That's coming out of something else, you see. And then you have the interpretation of tongues, which can be another lie from the devil. The Antichrist will counterfeit the gifts of the Spirit before the people, and they will accept him and believe him for it. And uh, on the next page, we give you all the things that he will be doing to, to deceive the people in these last days. All we want you to know is just a little bit. We just want you to know how to walk in the Spirit. And note the things that are of the Spirit. And be willing to test a thing. If a thing seems supernatural to you, have enough consecration to say, I'd like to test it. And test it with a, with a veteran, a pastor that's had many years of experience and said, test this place. But the case of the, that took place down in Texas and Oklahoma, the, the, the leaders were the ones that accepted this. And my spirit said, no. They even sent me little clips and said, you got to get this woman up there with you. I said, no, no, I don't. There's, there's something wrong there. 
And not long after that, they saw the deception themselves with their own eyes and it broke the whole thing up. But she's still going around the world. The last time I heard of her, she was in Italy doing this stuff over, over there. And, and we're living in a time when you have to know the truth and your knowledge of the truth will set you free from deceptions of the devil. Can you say amen? And, and so all we want our people to do is to be alert. Walk in the spirit, pray in the spirit, live in the spirit, shout in the spirit, and let Jesus keep us pure. The pure in heart shall see God. And all the people said, amen. give the Lord a hand to everybody. Well, that's the, uh, the, that's, uh, the fastest 30 minutes you ever had in your life. Uh, in, our, in our next lesson coming up, it will be how to receive the gifts of the Spirit. That, that is very important because if you're going to teach people what they are, then teach them how to receive them.